Hey everybody, welcome to the next episode of the Strand Tennis Center podcast, filled with tips, advice, tennis, not tennis, just life advice too, whatever you need. Uh, like it on YouTube, share it on uh, the podcast as well. Thank you. Good to go, Santi. Welcome to the Strand Tennis Center podcast. Looking forward to Thursdays. I'm Steve Capo. I am your host. We are at the Strand Tennis Center. We're always live. The phone may ring. People may walk in, but we like to keep it fresh here, Santi. And we had a good thing happen last week, Santi, right? I always say when mistakes happen, what do I say? Say You always look at it and say, what's good about this? What's the opportunity? So we recorded a podcast last week. It happened to have a metronome gonk on it, and it did not save. So, But I could hear it. You wouldn't want to hear the podcast. You have to gonk, gonk, gonk the whole time. It would be very, very hard. So, but I listened to it, and I was like, you know, I need to be more prepared. It was pretty good, but I could learn more about preparation. So I actually took notes, Santi, for this podcast. You did homework. I did homework, Santi. Made me go, you know, I could add some more information here. So we could provide, and this podcast is the value chain podcast. It's about the chain of value that goes through the system of a business. Because I get questions all the time, because I you know, have fellow people that run businesses, and we all talk, and we all commiserate. Not always bad all the time, always some good stuff, but Always the question about when do I raise prices? When do I transfer that fee to the customer? When do I raise prices? When do I raise prices? When do I raise prices? So I have my notes here, Santi, so I can remember. A lot of these things, people say, oh, I want to raise my prices because inflation. Because my bills increased. Because my uh, landlord increased my rent. Because I did this. Because I, my soft costs are more expensive. Uh, the water bill is more expensive. All these things. And they think that's a good reason to raise rates. And I'll ask you, Santi, since we did this podcast last week, maybe remember, is that a good reason to raise rates? Because of the bill? Uh, if you want to cover it, it's not a good reason. You should, re you should raise rates if you're providing a better service, not, not because, you know, you have an extra, an extra bill to pay. That's kind of, like, unfair. But I know, like, in some store, like, at stores and supermarkets, when they increase taxes and stuff, they'll just pass on the, the prices to the, the customer. You know what I mean? I, I'm sure there's always an exception to a rule. But if you're raising rates mm -hmm. because, oh, my bill's increased, you know what the customer's going to say? I don't give a shit. Yeah. They don't care. They don't give a shit about your costs or any of that stuff. So... That's your Any, overhead, right? Correct. That's yeah. the way life is. No one's going to be like, hey, uh, can you uh, my lesson price increase because Steve's, you know, water bill's more. <laughs> no one cares. No one gives a shit about that. And that's why the value chain is so important. So when we discuss it, I said the way, only way you can raise rates is when you look at the value chain and it's connected all the way through. And the value chain goes from the owner to the employee to the customer. Now, with the owner... His responsibility is to go, all right, where, what value am I getting? And that's always on the reverse. But we'll get to that at the end. So first you have to define, and I wrote this down, Santi, so I know. What did you define? Value? Yeah, first you have to define oh. value. What is value, Steve? <laughs> Don't even go. <laughs> like, we talked about this <laughs> last week. Is what is value, Steve? Could you? It's like Mr. Rogers' neighborhood. Neighbor, what is? What? 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 My sweater. <laughs> uh, but... I wrote it down so I made sure. Defining value is basically three or four things. Attention and listening with intent. You have to provide a proper arena where you're listening with intent, number one. Number two is elite and specific high-quality information. Focus on the task and then follow up. So I can go a little bit more. We can unpack those a little bit more. So attention and listening with intent. You know, I can listen to someone and not really hear them, right? So whatever service you're providing, and this is the beginning of value in a general term, you can service my value to the employee, the value then to the customer. It's all about listening with intent. It's all equal. These values equate to every part of the chain. Values defined as this thing. No matter, doesn't change for the employee to the customer, the owner to the employee. So you have to listen with intent, and you have to really, really, and when you're listening with intent, you're showing empathy. You really empathize and get what that person is saying to you. And if you don't, you're not listening with intent. 
So if you're listening with intent, then you can provide high quality, specific feedback. Like I can give you high quality feedback, but it has nothing to do with your problems because I'm not listening. So I can say, oh, in our tennis terms, I can teach you how to hit a topspin forehand, but maybe that person doesn't need that high quality information because they're hitting a forehand. They need something else you're not even listening to. Yeah. Or they need some mental advice that you're not listening to. So that is the key. And I'm going back to this now, I'm, I'm stumbling because I'm listening. I'm, tr I'm trying to focus, focus on the task. So you also have to focus on the task. I can give the feedback. It could be kind of specific. But if I'm not focused on you yeah. and really f caring about whether you're getting it, mm -hmm. it's dog shit. Okay. And the last one is follow-up. We don't do that a lot. How many times have you followed up? And guess what? This is the greatest example. Why This just hit me. So Equinox bought mm -hmm. SoulCycle, right? Oh, they did? Years ago. Oh, okay. Years ago. Oh. Two women ran it. And I think they cashed out $90 million. It was crazy. But... Who talks numbers? I don't care about money, Santi. I care about value. Um, I care about money. So <laughs> one of the vice presidents of Equinox, and I won't say this story perfectly. I remember a little bit of it. Went to SoulCycle. She took a class. Okay. She loved the class. And what blew her away about the class? Not the class itself. The person who gave her the class uh. or the manager who gave her the class just texted and said, I hope you enjoyed your class. Yeah. How, how did it go? How you feel? Yeah. And the woman was blown away. I mean, this woman works for Equinox. She's the yeah, vice yeah, president of yeah. customer service. She was blown away. She goes, they didn't ask for anything. They didn't ask for, you know, come back. They yeah, were yeah. just like, how'd you do? How are you happy you with like the class? It? How are you yeah, feeling? Yeah, yeah. And it blew her away. Yeah. They cared. They cared. Yeah. And that's where the follow-up is. That's caring. And you got to be genuine. Yeah. And what happens is, and I've been to Equinox, and I don't want to, you know, I like Equinox. I don't want to slam it. But you know is a very difference between caring, providing value, and going to the training school or the hospitality school. So I've gone into Equinox, and you know they've got that six feet, seven feet rule. When, not the COVID rule. This, uh -huh. this was a rule before. Yeah. You're like, what? No, right. the six or seven feet rule where if anybody's in your, in your eye line, you turn and you go, hello, Steve. <laughs> How's your day going? Yeah. And you know it's total bullshit that they've been told to do it. Instead of actually knowing who I am and actually saying, hey, Steve, genuinely caring. blah, 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 how's, yeah. the, how's the business, da, 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 instead of genuinely caring. They're yeah. getting all too, it's too programmed now. Mm. So you have to go even more, especially with all this technology, all of this ability. Like, I've gotten, I've gone to places that have been, you know, run by large companies, and you want to see, and I just go to see how their customer responses and customer services, right? So. Yeah. And you get an automated text saying, yo, you haven't gotten your blank in so long. You have to come in for your... Oh, it's yeah. not... Like a robot. Yeah, it's not like, they don't genuine. They just want my money. They I don't want, want the in. robo shit. Yeah, yeah. And what you have to do, and you know, Gary Vandercheck talks all about this, is scale the unscalable, right? You have to get 100 people, mm -hmm. 200 people to give a shit and text and provide the real value. Imagine, you know... It's unbelievable when I text somebody, you know, who's been out for six months and say, how's the injury? They're like, holy shit, how does this person remember that? Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. That is unbelievable value. And it's not bullshit because you're like, because you go through your day and you go, well, you know, you go through the schedule and you look at people and go, wait, wait a minute, what's her name's not here? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, she's injured. Let's see how she's doing. Because it's genuine and they're not, they're like, wow, they're not after my money. And again, like we said, every business needs to make money. We're not like, you know, I'm, we're not walking around here going, you know, give us donations. We don't need money. Yeah. But if you generally care, all the rest will take care of itself. So that really is what defines value. And I'll read it again so I get this right. Attention, listening with intent, elite and high quality specific information you're giving to the person with incredible focus and then with follow up. Yeah. That is value. So that's how it starts. You want to raise prices, start with that first. And it takes a while because you have to develop a reputation. Yep. So you have that value. You've, you've defined it. We've defined the value. We know what it is. So as the owner, me, I don't have to provide value to the customer as much because I'm not out there as much. I have to provide value to all the employees. And it's the same thing. 
It's got to be genuine. It can't be bullshit. It's got to be, okay, I'm going to listen to every employee. That's why we have one-on-ones with intent. That's why when I talk and we listen and I go, okay, what do they really need? What are they really asking for? Sometimes they're asking for something they're not even saying it. Oh, probably because they're too afraid to say it. Correct. You you see as like a, you know, obviously our boss. That's what's very hard. You can say, let's do one-on-one, say whatever you want. How many people say whatever they want? There's no way. It doesn't happen. I would say I hold back a little bit, too. (laughs) Everybody holds back. What do you think I'm going to do? You're not going to do anything. You love me. You you love me. You love me. It's a love fest. Uh, But that's the thing. Like, so I have to listen. Like, I've been interviewing people, right? And the interview... All the time is never the question that I ask them. Yeah. It could be them call them picking up the Zoom and their mannerisms of what they did and how they responded to you just saying hello to them. It's got really I mean the question like that's more important. Yeah, right? the the question that you ask somebody, everybody'll have a standard answer. Like you, yeah. we ask usually a question of an associate saying, you have four people in a class, a fifth shows up and they're not the right level, how, how do you do it? So, you know what I mean? You're like, you didn't ask me that question. You didn't ask me that one. You didn't ask me that one, Steve. I'd be nervous. So you want to know <laughs> no. <laughs> not even what their drills would be, how they handle that question, right? How they go, you know, if they say, you know, why is that person in the class? I'm like, well, this person's not right for the, for the play. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. how do you handle situations because it's a very fluid thing? It's how you, it's, They'll find an answer, but it's how they get to that answer, how, right? Yeah. It's how they deduce it, and they have deductive reasoning and problem solving. So going back to value, it's my job to listen to that, to go, all right, I'm listening with intent, mm-hmm. and I'm going to provide, if I listen really well, with specific, important information and feedback to the employee. And if I give that to them... They're going to be like, boy, Steve really listens to me, even though I'm not really even telling him everything. So when I do that, it provides two things. Mm -hmm. You know your boss is there for you. You know your boss cares more than just about what you can provide them. Your boss is like, well, just like what you did, just what did you do two minutes ago off off camera, you said, "Hey, uh, oh, yeah. four, yeah, four. yeah." I asked, uh, "Hey, Steve, I know on Saturday my lesson's out, but uh, if you don't want to book it, that'd be nice because I am leaving for New Hampshire." So, well, that and was you, so specific. Was yeah, he? Oh, you'd yeah, have oh, to be the, totally yeah, insensitive. Well, to be like, come to New Hampshire, "Sunty, New Hampshire. fuck you, <laughs> don't go." But yeah. obviously, uh, no problem. Just yeah. mark it out. You don't. You just yeah. get out of here, yeah. right? I mean, that's a very simple. That's a very yeah. simple get. Some people will be like. It's fine, no problem at all. And I'm like, yeah. they're not happy with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's listening with intent. And then following up is, again, reaching back out, checking in with that employee, going, hey, we did this, this, and this. How is that? How are you doing? How's going? What's going on? Because you need to provide a window or an umbrella of safety for the employee. They still need to show work ethic and work hard but they need to feel safe in that situation without feeling entitled. It's a very h- fine balance, right? They need to pull their under the weight. You need to listen. You need to be caring. You need to follow up. But they, and they need to feel safe mm-hmm. without feeling entitled. So if you provide, and you're, this is all you business owners who want to raise money, forget the customer. Provide value for six months to your employees, not just monetarily. Talking about us, we're trying to hire more people so the employee's schedule's better. Like, I could be the greatest guy in the world, but if I'm making people work too hard, which has always been our problem we discussed, it's always been difficult. 11 hours, 10 hours, 9 hours working is no matter what you do, if you love it, even if you love it, even if you, uh, you know, I mean, whatever, partying. I mean, but you're going to party 35 hours in a row, you're just going to be like, listen, I can't do this anymore. Anything you do in the extreme has a reverse effect. Too much work, too much partying, too much relaxing, all have the, has the reverse effect. So my job is to go, okay, I have to find, for this job, the right amount of people so people feel rested and excited to come here, but they don't feel left out either because you can get too many people and, they got, and they're fighting for work. So you need to, them to feel 
safe in the sense of they're making enough money. And w- this was in the podcast last time. So what's that magic number for people to feel safe? We talked about it, remember? 75K. 75K. 75K is the number, they did a study, where people can really get whatever they want, short of you having five kids and like, you know. Yeah. We're talking about the average person, even with... You can like afford a car, correct. afford rent, or afford to go out to dinner, yeah, afford yeah. a motorcycle. Yeah. <laughs> That's something for a motorcycle, yeah, see? Okay. Well, we don't know what you're making, though. We don't have no idea. No one knows. Um, but you know what I'm trying to say. You feel some breathing room. Because, and that's, and that's where, where I went back to the podcast last time. That's where people lose the fact that we're in an area where the net worth of people, and we talked about this before, what puts you in the 1% of salary people in the country? Uh, what did you say? Was it like 300K? 400K. 400K. It's 1%. And if you are making 400K here, people are like, eh, it's all right with all, these, all the finance people and all the you know, very successful yeah. people. So we start to lose the fact that people are mostly struggling just to pay for breakfast. Most people make like probably around 50, Correct. 40, right? Around America, other states. Yes. Even like the western, southern states, right? Yeah, they, yeah. the average the income... Struggle. I think the average median income is like I should know this. Yeah, like it's like 25? thir it's like twenty five, thirty, or thirty, thirty two, something 25. like that. Maybe we should know that. We should look that up and we should put it in the show notes. Yeah, keep of talking, I'll look it up. yeah, look it up. What's the average median income of uh, in the United States? Yeah. So knowing all of that, knowing that you have to provide value first for six months before you think about raising a price at your at your facility or your restaurant. You have to provide value to the employee. Then that chain is connected. The owner provides value to the employee. Then that chain can be bridged from the employee to the customer. And when the employee can provide all those things with us, it's on the court, right? They can, did you get the number or something, not yet? You, yeah, it says median household income in 2020 was 67,000. Hmm. That's the whole house. That's the whole house, that though. Means both Parents, yeah. So let's average, say, 32, 33. That's yeah. 30, 33, anything. 5. You can't buy anything. Unless you live in the middle of nowhere, then you can buy whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we, you provide that value, right? Now, let me make sure I have my notes and I'm correct. Okay. So the employee now can feel safe. Because, again, like we said, working too hard. uh, And the one last point about the employee and this kind of job. Working in a physical job equals, it's probably two times a regular hour in the office. So one hour on the court is two hours in the office. Because, again, no break, full hour of focus. That's why you need incredible focus, right, to give value. You have to be there for the customers. If you feel like you're not paying attention to them, they... They can tell. Yep. You know what I mean? You have to pay attention to them, engage with them, and then you physically have to move around and perform. Like I said, you have to hit every ball yeah. sometimes. Yeah. Luck, some, some classes you get lucky. They're big groups. In other words, it's a clinic, and you can walk around and teach, but you still have to feed. You know, fitness instructors is just hard, but luckily you don't have to do the exercises, right? Yeah. You're, you're, you're a personal trainer. Yoga teacher, you don't have to do the exercises, I'd say it's pretty tough because if you're doing, say you do seven private lessons in a row, I mean, you have to hit every ball, right? So very physically demanding. You have to understand that as the owner, we can't do that. Because if I do that to the employee, they don't provide value to the customer. The customer, they need that time. They need that break. They need the time to recoup to be able to say, okay, I'm going to give attention. I'm going to give value. I'm going to follow up. I'm going to give specific value to what that person needs, and I'm going to give incredible focus. And you can't do that working 10 hours in a row. So once you develop that chain, then, like we said, once you develop the chain and say, uh, like we said, a, a piece of value for an hour is $50, if that chain is fulfilled, what is the value they're getting? You remember this, too? If you know that the value chain is set, what do you think the value you're providing for that $50? You're providing at least like $75. Correct. Oh, you remembered this stuff. That's good. So I if the... If, I pay attention. <laughs> if the chain is set, you should be providing $75 worth of value for a $50 lesson. 
then you have enough delta to go, okay, now we can raise rates five bucks and no one will care. And I said this before the podcast before, and this is a Dr. Sean Patouche is a great, he mentioned this on his podcast, uh, Active Life. He's got a company, Active Life, up in, uh, in Long Beach. Great company. He said, raising rates, you don't think about it when it's Netflix, right? Because the value they provide is so, so through the roof that when they charge you $3, I look at it from my end and say, it's, I need it. It's so great, I need it, right? But if I'm the one doing it, that means I have to have confidence that I'm providing the value. Now, me, it's hard for me, right? I never think I'm doing good enough. So, and it's a smaller company, so you have to put the value through the roof. So, and I should flip it on its head, right? I should say, all right, I don't care about $3 for Netflix. I should not care about 4 or $5 for the customer if we are providing that, providing that value. I mean, Netflix puts, I mean, how many, how many billions of dollars of cash they put into their productions, right? I mean, I don't, you can even look that up too. I mean, they're spending so much money for content. And it's worth and the price. It's competition now too. Correct. Right. Well, that's a beautiful thing, right? It makes you motivated. Right? What, Disney? Well, you have Disney Plus. You have Hulu. Oh, they're all, we can go on and on. I learned this in the economics class. I think it's called an oligopoly. Uh, <laughs> I can't say it. Oligopoly? Uh, yeah, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah. not monopoly. So it's like, yeah. A, yeah. It's a perfect market, blah, blah, blah. Well, they have the most users, right? They have, what do they have? I, I sh- you know, yeah, 200 million, 400, something like that. They just first to market. Really, the f- they say the battle is international now. And you, if you look on Netflix... You know how many foreign films are on there they're making? Yeah, they're how many subtitled cool. films? How many Korean films? How many Japanese, Spanish films? They are, they're smart. And then they just bought a couple of uh, gaming companies, right? I don't know. They did? They did? Okay. Be aware of that. Smart, too. Oh, they're smart, yeah. So you establish that chain. You're providing $75 worth of value for $50. Then you can say to yourself, okay, we can raise rates here because... We are looking outwardly first. We're looking to the customer first. Only then, and then you can raise rates. Other than that, you have to really, really be honest with yourself. If you're not, if any part of that chain is broken, you cannot raise rates. You have to go back to the drawing board, so to speak, and say, what do we miss? And our problem sometimes is, and our problem, we all have problems. Our problem sometimes is, you know, and I'm not, this is not like a humble brag. We're too busy and we're trying to figure out how to accommodate people. And then, and then you can't, and the value lags. It's the way it is, right? If you're just like, geez, we just need to fill the lesson and get through the day. Sometimes you find yourself just getting through the day going, oh, I have to fill the lesson instead of, you know, stepping back and saying, okay, let's see how many people we can get in here to take the pressure off just trying to fill the day. And we were talk- talking about this last time. You know, it, this intermittent fasting thing, just be a tennis pro. You don't need to intermittent fast. You get on the court, six hours, you don't eat. You get a little snack, eight hours. You, like, you don't even need. You don't eat enough. You don't eat enough. You lost 25 pounds. You lost 25 pounds. Yeah. Chris, Chris, I mean, you see that he's picture chubby. over there, Chris. He's chubby. He was chubby, Chris. Yeah. And there was a funny moment. He was, we were doing a consult. This is a great little thing. We were doing a consultant gig at a country club, and he, you know, you have to roll the courts, clay courts. You have oh, to yeah, roll yeah. them with like a Zamboni. And somebody hit the net post, but it wasn't Chris. <laughs> but it maybe it was, I don't think it was Chris because the guy was like, I saw on the cameras this heavy set blonde guy, and Chris <laughs> was like, this is ridiculous. It was so Chris. funny. Thought it was Chris, and he has lost a ton of weight. CJ lost a ton of weight too, working here in the beginning, because you just don't realize. All of a sudden, you get here at nine o'clock. It's three, and you're like, "Wait a minute, I didn't eat anything." You walk about like six miles a day, if not more. Yeah, I used to That's do that. Just walking. I used to if do that. Play, yeah. If you play close to nine, ten. Yeah. Miles. Because it's always long. Steps. I used to have one of those stepper things. It's always yeah. last time. I'm already over 20,000 steps. Like, what's yeah. the point of just throw this thing out? There's no, yeah. you know what I mean? You wa- That hallway is long. How many times yeah. I walk up and down that hallway? Yeah. Picking up balls. You walk lots of steps, too. It just never stops. Play tennis. Play with us. Play with us. You're like, it never Work stops. It's, it's hell. Come yeah. on. It's a great play. No. So, <laughs> but 
we, we trailed off there. But that was the thing. We're talking about, you know, fasting and how hard the job is. And that's why you need to make sure the, the employee is incentivized enough and feels fresh enough to provide that value. Because if you do, you're going to be able to raise rates and feel comfortable with it. And then a network effect will be created where there'll be a supply and demand issue where you'll be so busy because you're providing so much value that there won't be any room. And uh, it's a good thing. It's a good thing when the chain is connected. So that's all I wanted to talk about, the value chain. If you're thinking about raising rates, look at the value chain, make sure it's connected, then you can consider raising rates. Other than that, stay active, Santi. Go out there. Get some exercise. I don't care where you get it. The answers and the actions. Thank you for joining us for this podcast. Hopefully, it provided value. Thanks. Hey, everybody. Hope you liked the podcast. Please share with your friends, anybody that you know, anybody that's into tennis, anybody that's into bettering themselves, share it.